Hey, Kai here. Today we're talking about how to make money finding and buying unwanted land and property. More specifically, how I made approximately $200,000 in just four days with this piece of land right here. By the end of this video, you should know the basics of how to search out and find both land and homes where there are good deals to be had. Remember on this channel, my goal is to help you quit your day job and show you different ways of hacking, growing, and making more money. Slap hands, bump fist, let's go. Okay, so we're talking about how you can make some money buying unwanted land and properties. Let's talk about this property here real quick so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, the last time that this property was sold to a private buyer, it sold for $315,000. Ignore the $640,000 sale right now. I'll explain it in a little bit later in this video. But the important thing is that this right here is me where I got the land for $90,000. But I found this deal and did something very specific that allowed me to increase the value to nearly $300,000 in less than a week after purchasing it. Stick around and I'll show you in more detail what I did. Or if you're extremely impatient, you can skip to the timestamp right here that I'll put in post. So the secret of turning a quick profit is just being really lucky. Yep, that's pretty much it. But that's not necessarily in my control. But a close second is when it comes to making money on properties is know how to deal with why people don't want something. In this case of homes and land, it can range from anything from mold, foundation, structural, or even landslide issues. Your job as a beginner entrepreneur slash investor is to find the deal first. Don't worry, we'll get to how to solve the problem next but it's important you are able to identify the problem and understand the value of it first. And how I do this is rather simple. You can do it too. I call in a favor from my rich dad. Obviously we all have one, right? Hey dad, do you have any spare properties I can have? <laughs> oh yeah, just that $500,000 one? That'd be perfect, thanks. Just kidding, that doesn't really happen to me and probably for most of you out there too. I end up outsourcing it. I work with several real estate agents and put up alerts on sites such as Zillow and Redfin for what I'm specifically looking for. Real estate agents are like a free sales funnel for you. They only get paid when the deal is done and they have access to a lot, if not close to all the inventory in your city. But be mindful here though, that some agents are very specialized in one area or a specific type of property. That's why when I'm searching, I reach out and utilize several different agents. Next, when I'm working with agents or even just searching on my own, I have to be pretty specific with what I'm looking for and what kind of work I'm willing to do. For example, if I'm really good at fixing foundations and roofs and my entry point for an investment is 200,000 with 150,000 in liquid funds, I don't wanna be looking at $500,000 triplexes with electrical and plumbing issues, totally outside of my wheelhouse. Which reminds me, don't forget to get your funding situated. Unless you truly have wealthy parents and have access to instant cash. But if you do, I'm not sure why you're watching this video right now, but thanks. Anyways, however you're planning on funding the project, just make sure it's primed and ready so when the deal pops up, you can jump on it right away. The best way to create a financial regret is to lose a great deal because you didn't set up step one first. I learned that the hard way in my early 20s. Next is be very specific with what you're looking for. It's not just about pricing in the area, but also the scope and who you buy it from or whom you buy it from. When I speak to my agents, my example language is like this. I'm looking for raw land between one to two acres zoned for multi-use and multi-family residential that has slope and land concerns. Ideally, it has been on the market for at least three to four months with a few dropped pending offers and the seller seems eager to sell. Bonus points if it's a bank owned lot. My high limit is 300,000, but I'd really like to find something in the $200,000 range. I only want lots in Lincoln, Washington, and Jefferson counties. Do you see how specific I was? The more precise you can be, the better. Once you know what you're looking for, you should be able to start having a few deals trickle in from your agents and then from whatever you find online. This is where things can get really interesting. Immediately when a deal comes up, and I typically know this already, but it's a good exercise to do anyways. I put it up against comparables in the area, also known as comps in the real estate industry. Usually no more than about one to maybe two square miles, depending on the location and the market. I personally like to see at least a 50% discount in pricing before I really get interested. 
I then calculate how much time, labor, and materials it would cost to bring the property to market value. Now this all happens in literally two minutes on the back of a napkin or envelope. But if it's profitable, then I'll set up an on-site visit and be ready to call some subcontractors because usually deep discounts mean deep issues. But we're not scared of issues because that's where we bring the value and make that money. And don't you dare be scared of that like button either. Destroy that thumbs up and subscribe and join the channel. It's free and you'll be doing me a solid with the YouTube algorithm. So that's pretty much it. Once you walk it, talk to a sub, pencil out the cost, add in a minimum 20% contingency just in case something unforeseen happens or occurs. And if you can make a profit that you're comfortable with, you've got yourself a deal in your hands. All right, so let's talk a little bit more specific about the property that I just showed you and you can see what I mean. So this property was sold as raw land back in 2006 for $315,000. Again, I'll explain that 2008 sale here in a second. But like I mentioned, that's my purchase right there back in 2015 for $90,000. So what could have happened in those nine years between the $315 sale and my sale of 90,000 that created a $225,000 discrepancy? The recession had already came and gone and I was in a market where prices were basically going gangbusters, growing 30, 40, 50% year over year. The market was absolutely insane. The reason was there were supposedly landslide issues and it was bank owned. The previous owner had started to build this 10,000 square foot mansion on the lot and unexpectedly passed away. The unfinished house wasn't weather tight and it started to rot. The bank took it over. That's the $640,000 purchase in 2008 when the bank bought it back, demoed the rotted framed house and the land was shoved into a portfolio that was then sold to another bank. This is the type of deal I drool over since it's not emotional and it's just a transaction on the books. In this case, a huge liability to the bank. But the bank was not a complete fool and had listed the land for $200,000 hoping to get it off its books. Well, it sat there for years on the market because the previous home had started to sink due to poor construction and bad water drainage management. The property was stamped with a seller's nightmare of land issues. I came on site, walked it, and interviewed all the neighbors about the area and what was going on with this specific site. I got some great insight and knew that the land was worth a lot more than it was being sold for, primarily since it had an unobstructed view of the valley and lake, minus a small tree. At that time, the asking price had dropped to $120,000. Now, this is where I made my money. I did some deep digging in the county records and just combing through all the details in public records. And I happened to find a previous couple who had actually hired a geotech engineer to do a full analysis on the property a few years back. I called the geotech engineer and spoke with him and basically got him to say that the site was fine. I was even able to get the geotech report in my hands, but I probably wanted to do another report just to verify nothing had changed or shifted in the few years since he had been there. Now the bank that owned the property did not have this information and all they knew was that the property had significant landslide issues or land issues and they just recently had to pay a lot of money to demo the last McMansion that was attempted to be built on it. After a lot of back and forth with the bank, I eventually talked them down and got the property for $90,000 cash. I hired the geotech engineer to come out and do a full report the next day that cost me roughly $2,500 and the land was given a thumbs up with a few excavation requirements that weren't really a big deal and the property was no longer a land issue. The market value of the property jumped back up to two hundred eighty dollars to $300,000 just with that geotech stamp of approval. So that's a very specific example of how I look and buy deals. But I've talked about this kind of investing in a few of my previous videos where I talk about not trying to eke out just a five to 7% return but instead I aim for triple digit returns. In this case, I basically hit 200% return with very minimal work in just a few days. Now don't get me wrong, it won't always be this easy or clean. I know a bunch of homes and properties that seem like a good deal on the surface, but there's a lot of underlying work and undiscovered surprises you can't see until you start getting into the project. But with that said, there's money to be had and if you want to leave your day job soon or even if you just want to make a little side bank, I strongly suggest that you look into buying even a simple little fixer upper or remodeler and get a basic understanding of how to fix things. Not only will it help you in your day-to-day -day life in your own home, but who knows, it can help you make some good money and not have to work that day job anymore.
I hope you learned something today. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button for me and sub to the channel right here. In a little bit, I'll put a video right here, giving you a tour of the home and the income rental I built on the property you just saw in today's video. And then right here, I'll put another video where I talk about how I left my day job after creating a six figure rental income stream. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Love you all. Kai out.